two, one. Hi everybody, we are here again at Guru Shangu for the fourth edition of Guru Talks podcast, the world meets, well, here in Bali. And today with us, we have Ari Weko. How are you today? Um, good. <laughs> yes, very good. Huh? <laughs> so Ari is our invited guest for today. Ari is a filmmaker, is an artist, and is the founder of a company called uh, Aerial Photography and how is it? Naga. Naga is a photography and a cinematographic company. Why right? Naga, man? Why Naga? Naga Visions. Huh? Naga Vision. Because Nagas, they fly really high and they protect Bali and okay, so the Nagas. Yes, yeah. yes, mm. yes, yes. Very yes. sacred animals here in Bali and Indonesia. It is, it mm. is indeed. So, I, how are you, Mr. Francisco Oliveira? <laughs> I don't know, somebody invited me today to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, it must be my pleasure. He's the guest. Pleasure. He's the guest. He's the guest. <laughs> So we are going to start making some introduction uh, about uh, like we are going to talk first about your uh, upcoming to Bali and where did you were raised? You were raised in Finland. That's yeah. where you were born, right? Yeah. And it's Finland is very far away from Bali <laughs> and right. much more colder than Bali. <laughs> That's for sure. Huh? Yeah, I born in Finland and Helsinki. Grew up in the uh, countryside, uh, 50 kilometers out from Helsinki and. Beautiful, beautiful place, and uh, so my upbringing was in the forest with my dog, no other friends. I was actually and going to uh, ask you what are the hobbies that you do when you're growing up in Finland, because yeah. it's a very natural landscapes. You have the aurora boreal there as yeah, well. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Huh? yeah, we fish and hunt a lot, and and you are an amazing yeah. rally drivers. I oh, heard. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. the best drivers in the world. Yeah, yeah we have very good rally drivers, huh? and I. I had the chance to meet uh, one of one of the best here in Bali years back. Uh, yeah. And um, Juha Kankunen. Yeah. Hey Juha, if you see it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Four four times world championship. You know, I, I, I know why in reality the Finnish are amazing doing rallies. It's because the roads with snow and everything you really know how to, if you don't know how to drive you are lost. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, it's it's the four seasons, huh? you learn to drive uh, with the slush and mud and everything. summertime, winter time. Snow, uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, makes good drivers. Huh? <laughs> so we have some guests coming Hello, up. Hello, Simonetta. How Simonetta are you? and Marco, just coming from Italy. Welcome back to Bali. <laughs> yeah. And Alberto. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. One of the masterminds behind Guru talks is coming. Oh. Paparazzi, please finish <laughs> taking photos. <laughs> Very good. So, Francisco, I think you have some questions. Yes. Uh, knowing that you in the late 90s, you come to Bali, yeah? That's the uh, I came here in 98 as a student mm -hmm. and uh, my... Art student. Art, art student, yeah. And uh, my first year, my first vi visit was uh, one year. And I studied Balinese wood carving. Huh? Mm -hmm. Wood carving? Wood wood that's carving. in Mass, near Bubut. I studied actually in Tabanan with the royal family of Tabanan in Puri Krampitan. There wow. was an introduction for Balinese art, dance, and drawing, and wow. wood carving. And, and then we, girlfriend at that time from Finland, we chose to uh, go to Ubud. And uh, we found a really, really beautiful uh, Balinese uh, wood carving teacher, Pak mm -hmm. Nyoman. And uh, yeah, we spent um, nine months with him, and uh, we built a built a cupboard and four poster bed, and uh, learn all the motifs and, and But take, that's in Mars uh, near uh, near Mars yeah. is the, 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 yeah. the place It's like a cent carving. center of arts in Bali, uh, yeah. and I've all the wood carvers they are they are very highly skilled there and uh, very proud of their work. Uh, of I heard that in these days of COVID they are suffering a little bit. Yeah. Oh uh, yes, yeah, sure, but there is uh, there is. Thank God there is some buyers still uh, who buy art and um, furniture and uh, I've been few of the cargo companies looking for um, mm. uh, how things are. It. Yeah, still shipping mm. going on, even it's so highly expensive now. But they, they're still doing business, yeah, that's good. People still doing business and of course there is the online online business, so people smart and uh, you know start mm -hmm. to sell online. And, mm -hmm. So it's, it's really good to see. Uh. And um, I, was, I was thinking also because 
you came, wh wh how old were you when you came to Bali? I was 28 years old. Huh? Wow. Mm -hmm. So you came as an art student, as you already explained to us. Uh, and how was it like at the eyes of a young art student to arrive in Bali? How was the feeling of the island back then? Because this oh is the God. early 90s, right? Yeah. Or the uh, late, late 90s. Late 90s, late 90s. Uh, it was just after the uh, economic uh, crash in Asia. So everything was super cheap and uh, I, didn't, it, I didn't have any money. So <laughs> it was really good that it was cheap. But it was, I didn't know anything about Bali. Huh? I, I, I had no, there was no Google, there was, I didn't know anything. I maybe see one photograph from Bali. Yeah? And so it was a full, full discovery of, of this island, the culture, the people, and, and uh, it just took me through my soul, uh, really, really deep. Uh, mm -hmm. that this place touched me so strong, and, and I'm still here after 20 24 years. <laughs> and how, how did that happen? Uh, how, why did you choose Bali back then to, to um, come in? And, uh, it was the art. Huh? It was the yeah, art. it was the wood carving art and um, uh, these people here, they're so highly skilled. Every, every mother and new man and why and they are wood carvers. Everybody know how to carve a little bit and, uh, and it's, it's, in, it's in the Balinese genome, I think. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. Everybody is artist in some level. And mm -hmm. I'd like to say the woman artists, the everyday artists, they are the ladies who make all the offerings. Huh? Oh, yes, that's because that's every, small kind that's of art. Yeah, every mm -hmm. single piece of bandana leaf and flower and everything, it, it have a meaning. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a really high art here. Yes. Huh? And it's every day. Into details, very exquisite. Yeah, yes, into yes. Them. So and where did you find the difference between becoming as a student of art from Finland? Mm. Yeah, and you have this kind of culture that you are grasping there, and then your IV and see this detailed and deep way of working with art and touched you. What, where do you feel the difference between the Western Finnish kind of art learning and this? Mm, no, here it's the freedom of you. You can learn whatever you want. Huh? It, that that's really strike me like. You can do whatever you want mm -hmm. here, and there is no restrictions. Huh? You want to learn dance, you want to learn painting. Everything is. You, is you, you just jump in and uh, do and it. People embrace you. Yeah, it, people embrace you, and uh, and yeah, and and so many of my friends, artistic friends, they, they have mm -hmm. very similar journey huh? because mm -hmm. here is the freedom, huh? yeah. the freedom of, of creating art and join together with people from west, from east, from north, from south. Huh? And another question that I'd like to do regarding this. So coming from Finland, you come with any kind of spiritual practice or meditation or, or culture, religion, culture, and you arrive here, you see this, this place where people pray every day and do all these offerings. Did you find this like a space in your heart that you start to explore you didn't explore before? I went to India two, two years before uh, I uh, came okay, here. Okay. And there, there I learned first time uh, meditation and see like religion in everyday action and how people can embrace God in such a beautiful way mm -hmm. and so colorful way and so deep and meaning, meaningful way. Huh? Yes. And, uh, and then, yeah, India is a hard place uh, <laughs> to is. be. And, uh, and, uh, but it, is, it, it was that moment which really woke me up. You and feel? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was my it's first. Honest. Yeah, it was my first trip out from Europe to India, and then my, I made, after two years, I moved So here you were around 18? Yeah. When you went to India? No, I was 26. Huh, oh, when okay, I went oh, to okay, India. you went. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. 26, 28 here. Yeah, yeah, correct. Huh? So yeah. I have another question to mm. ask you, yeah? So, you you have these, you know, people come to Bali, yeah? And they forget there are 13 or 17,000 17, islands here, yeah? Yeah, correct, yeah. And half of them are not inhabited, they are, they are inhabited. Yeah, yeah there's so tiny, tiny little islands. So. Yeah, but this is massive, kind of different cultures everywhere. Yeah. Because an island obliged the culture to isolate and mm. somehow develop in different ways. Mm. After Bali, you felt the urge to go and explore different places. Yeah, yeah correct. Can you speak about what was the next step? Um, I went uh, after my student year. I went to Sulawesi. That was my first island out from from uh, Bali, mm -hmm. and then I went to Java, and then I went back to Sulawesi. I really fell in love with Sulawesi. And Why? It's 
the variety of cultures there and the tribes uh, from the highlands to the lowlands and to the coastlines. And, and, uh, but then 2006, together with a good friend of mine, Ilan, Ilan Weinblatt, we went to Sumba and uh, we went to um, uh, photographing um, mm -hmm. uh, Pasola and uh, it's a horseback uh, spear fighting ritual yes. and we were totally blown away with Ilana and, uh, and we made our first photo exhibition together with, with Ilan in uh, Viceroy Hotel in Ubud and uh, greetings for everybody there <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah it was mind-blowing experience and then Sumba came my like a focus point so I went there every year for Pasola and uh, I bring some uh, groups there and um, together with Joe Yagi from um, uh, his film company mm -hmm. uh, I bring he, him and uh, his um, uh, film crew there and uh, we, he filmed it really beautifully um, and uh, in that time I met uh, Claude Graves in Nihivatu Mm -hmm. And a part of the group was staying in Nihivatu, so we had access to go. So you, you stayed in Nihivatu? No, we, we, were, <laughs> we, we were empty pockets, we stayed in Waikapupak, and, uh, but we had the access to go in this amazing place. This and, is a uh, magic yeah, place. It's amazing, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, as Sumba, it's an incredible island, uh, and spoiled with nature. Mm. And well, back then, and I, I would like to explore a little bit with you, how was it? Because it's still a kind of a remote island these days yeah. but back then it was much more and I, I i can i can imagine that people were not very used to see foreigners no they were not and how um, was it that relation with the, with the population there um, i were already enough long time in indonesia so i could speak indonesian and um, uh, the first trip uh, really teach me how to um, uh, be with the people and uh, address myself when I go to the villages and you always have to have a you know bag of betel nut and uh, a lot of color pens for the kids huh? so okay. yeah it's a full bribing uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah and most of the time uh, you you think that you bring the color pens for um, uh, children but yes. the adults they, they actually, they they actually stole them because in those days uh, there was no Nothing. pencils uh, and uh, that really struck me how poor people are there and uh, how rich Bali is and uh, always been uh, since tourism started here and uh, mm -hmm. it was really really a place to explore and uh, sometimes really scary also because everybody's carrying With a long, smile, long knife. yeah long long uh, parang knives and uh, and they really look very at tribal, you uh, yeah? very tribal Be, uh, you know I've been there in this in 2016 mm. I saw the most amazing sunsets ever right. in Indonesia. Oh, yeah. It's like orange and mm. pink. Mm. Mm. And I remember thing. each time I go to a piece of land because we're trying to buy something, mm. there was a guy with a spear and come with a certificate and the, <laughs> and the <laughs> knife right, speaking right. with you, like 10 guys in after mm. him. Mm. And then it was an amazing place with tombs from the Dutch that died there. No, they actually, no? They, they are not the Dutch tombs. Uh, they are the uh, Sumbanese tombs and they, it's a mono... Yeah, yeah monolithic. Yeah, yeah they, it's okay. a mono, monolithic culture. Huh? Okay. And... Uh, they were animists. Yeah. Very much animists. And they're still animists. Uh, they only Sundays they are Christian. And, okay. Uh, the rest of the week they're animists. And the horse riding kind of competition... It's not competition, it's like a... Mm, it's a com commemorating the um, uh, good old uh, head hunting days. Because they always they were had, uh, yeah, they, they, were, they, yeah. they were cannibals, and um, uh, they had tribal warfare. And um, hundred eight seven years ago, um, uh, uh, Christian missionaries they stopped the fighting, but the Sumbanese they chose that okay, let's have a war one one day a year. So and they do that same, and they do one 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 day war. And, and the I think uh, the whole whole world should be like that, <laughs> just one war one day. That's it. <laughs> But the horses are very strong, yeah, because yeah. you can do horse riding on the beach, so you need to have very strong yeah. legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are, um, uh, they are sandalwood horses and uh, they are originated from Mongolia. The Chinese bring long time ago. Wow. From, and they are That's half, wild. Yeah, they are half wild um, 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 uh, horses and uh, very stubborn, always biting. Uh. <laughs> so the, the festival they do with spears and horses, this is like one hour festival two hours no it's 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 actually it takes two months um, um, from beginning to end uh, so there is like um, uh, from village to village uh, people going to um, uh, like uh, the young guys they go in a in a square a village square or somewhere in the bush and there is coming uh, five to seven referees 
and uh, they have a boxing, uh, Sumbanese boxing, uh, which is wow. which is crude boxing. Uh, mm. Nothing in their hand. And they put a stone or a piece of metal and uh, then they put a um, uh, canvas here and they go in a line here and line here and then there's referees everywhere and people start wow. shouting and singing and uh, then they have like a war, war uh, dance and then one of the referees say fight. <laughs> and then they all go in one go and oh bang, 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 and there's you know teeth flying all over the place <laughs> and blood and uh, and that goes from village to village for until they for find the fighter. They no, they they get them um, the bad best. bad blood or they get mm. them you know who they gonna fight uh, for the horse fighter. Uh. Mm. So they get a really really panas. Uh. They get very hot. Uh. Very hot. And uh, then when it's coming the pasola day. It's a very, very strong ritual. Huh? In that time of the year, February, March, there is coming these sea worms, which are called niale. Okay. They're um, uh, very color, like rainbow color um, um, uh, sea worms. And the shamans, uh, the Sumba shamans, the ratu, they go in the shoreline and they collect them, uh, sea worms. And they can see the future. Huh? Mm. And they, they decide, okay, is it a good day for fight or not? Huh? And it's always a good day for fighters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then they have a ceremonial fight on the beach, mm -hmm. and um, uh, there is already, you know, everybody is on their best clothes, and uh, you know, everybody's it's in a, a fight. Yeah, everybody's in a fighting mood. Huh? And the biggest puzzle in Lamboya, in West Sumba, there is around 230, 250 horses, huh? and several different villages they are fighting between mm -hmm. each other. Huh? So it's a big thing. And what was the project that you developed specifically there? In, in Zumba, Zumba, in uh, one of my trips 2010, I met uh, Claude Graves, uh, the owner of uh, Nihivatu in that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have also a long time lighting company here in Bali. And um, Claude was in that time um, uh, ready to uh, expand his resort. And uh, he chose me as a lighting designer in his, his place in Nihivatu. And so you were the lighting designer of Niwatu yeah, Hotel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did the lighting for 15 luxury villas, wow, uh, inside, outside. Now I understand. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I ended up to spend uh, almost four years with Claude. And um, thanks, Claude. <laughs> is, uh, they are an amazing mm. couple. Uh, yeah, Claude, Claude and, Claude and uh, his, his, uh, his wife, wife in that time, uh, Petra. And yeah. they did something amazing in that Yeah, place, um, yeah. when they built the um, resort in early 90s, mid 90s, um, they started also Zumba Foundation, which yes. helps uh, helps the local people from malaria, malnutrition, mm -hmm. a lot of school programs, and uh, it's been gone uphill since then. Uh. They, yeah. There was a long, many, lo many hard years, but now like the malaria program, it's uh, it's a world best malaria program in the whole planet, uh, mm -hmm. because Zumba have uh, the, all the malaria um, uh, strains. strains, strains. And Vaika Bupak in West Zumba there is um, a high, one of the best laboratorium in the whole whole planet. Huh? And this is uh, supported by the Zumba, the Zumba, Zumba Foundation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used to, uh, when I was working in Swarga Padang Padang, it's one of the places that received mm. um, this program from Zumba Island. Wow. And I just have wonderful things to say about wow. Zumba people. Mm. They can from Zumba Island Hospitality well, Foundation. Yeah. They are just sweethearts mm, and well. very, very good workers. Mm. And it started from one village and now the whole malaria program is covering the whole entity, all Eastern Indonesia, all the um, uh, uh, government uh, health um, <coughs> facilities, mm -hmm. the uh, nurses, they are already, um, uh, they know how to recognize them. I'm just curious malaria. about one thing until mm. I go on for the next one. Mm. S regarding the this Sumba Foundation, it was done before they did Niwato or it was at the same time? Um, uh, Nihivato and uh, Sumba Foundation was founded in the same time. That right? was very smart. Yeah, yeah, very smart. Yeah. So when the guests they come there, um, there is always a tour to the facilities and people can help. They can actually go and help. And so if you go to the um, hotel, you can go and uh, give food for the school children the next That's day. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was funded uh, with big banking companies and uh, nowadays uh, there is a very good private private um, um, uh, funding mm -hmm. so uh, they don't have to worry uh, to gather the money yeah, anywhere. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, it's well um, orchestrated. Very well orchestrated and I end up to be um, the water, water project manager for a year in, in Sumba Foundation and uh, yeah 165 square kilometer area with 
hundreds of uh, water tanks and broken pipes and uh, there's wow. a lot still a lot of rivalries lot of between work. the between the villages so water pipes they are mm. cut down and generators broken off and so we, we, we created the program <coughs> together with Claude in that time mm -hmm. to um, uh, to give the water responsibility for the people huh? because before it was the foundation took care of it but we created a program that people have the ownership for their own so water. So you don't huh? give the fish, you are not to exactly, yes. fish yes. by yourself, yes. which yeah. is the correct yeah. way That's to do right it. And it was, it was a very very hard thing to do in the beginning mm -hmm. but once we get it going on uh, it's mm -hmm. all the other villages they copy the program. So we are talking about the foundation with 30 years now? Around yeah, that. yeah it is. That's a, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a very uh, mm. Uh, substantial work mm. already done. Well, yeah. So uh, this goes more or less in the question I wanted to make you, yeah, to ask you. Uh, what is until now uh, the highlight of your working uh, experience in Indonesia? Mm. So you did Zumba, you did, uh, we, we went to speak about Timur, we know about mm. that, and the movie night is about that particular kind of mm. program, yeah? What is the highlight of your experience in, in, in Indonesia? You know, or each one of them represents an amazing experience by itself, <laughs> so you cannot say this is better and the other one is less. Yeah. It's, it's a hard question, uh, but yeah, like some art programs what I have done here in Bali, uh, they are the, you know, Bali, Balinese highlights. We have a long time um, uh, cross-cultural art program in Pakudu in Tekalalang, together mm -hmm. with Pak Madeada, and uh, his most famous uh, wood cover in, in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and we've done a lot of cross-cultural programs. Uh, with artists from the West and from Indonesia, Balinese, Javanese. And, and where do you expose all this work? Um, it's been in Bali TV quite a lot. And oh yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so uh, Pak Madeada, he is like, he have a slot for Bali TV like three times a week. <laughs> so he <laughs> so has a space for him. Yeah, we, we, we've been exposed well there. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately now in the COVID time, it's much more yeah, lower, um, but still, still, um, you know, it's, and. Filming, filming uh, ceremonies here, which happen once in a lifetime. Those, of course, they've been really highlights here in Bali. You know? mm -hmm. and, and each island, what I've been filming and helping people, uh, they, they, there's always a you know special place in my in my course. in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, so your heart is full of love regarding this. Uh, I would say Indonesian culture because mm -hmm. it's so, it's a melting pot of different mm, cultures, it is, it martial is. arts mm. and dancing and mm. music. Right. And, uh, Each island has such a different variety of, mm -hmm. of, of own culture, It'll, like microcosmos of, of <laughs> or actually microcosmos, <laughs> it's so massive. Eh? So now I have another one. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bad guy memorizing uh, questions. No worries. <laughs> and I go free flow, yeah, mm. as you can notice. Mm. So now we arrive Timor, yeah? Yeah. And we were speaking outside about this. We are Portuguese. Mm. Yeah. So we were when Suarto was still the president. Mm. And that was not the easy times. Uh, you have been there in those days? No. Not, no. You are after, yeah? After. And I remember we did a human chain in Portugal. Mm. And we jammed all the phone connections of mm. CNN. Mm. You remember this? Yeah, I remember CNN from could not so. receive phone calls mm. because every single Portuguese phone at the same time to CNN mm. to say they are murdering people in Timor. Mm. Mm. And this was on one of the reasons that they were able to, they were able to uh, reach an agreement mm. for freedom. Mm. And you arrived a little bit afterwards. So I went to Timor-Leste 2011. I was mm. invited there with um, four friends of mine uh, in an international uh, big game fishing competition, <laughs> which was uh, funded by Timor Leste government. Very spiritual. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but it was my first touch base uh, with that amazing okay. country and um, and um, Mr. Ex President Ramos Hort and um, his his uh, right hand uh, com commander um, Michael Stone. Hi, Mike. Ah, okay. Uh, they created a lot of sport programs um, uh, since 2009 okay. uh, in Timor Leste, and uh, it was to the whole idea to create these sport programs was to um, uh, stabilize the country and make people understand the local people understand that there is coming Western people for sport programs, 
and they don't need to kill anymore each other, right? because there was still a lot of lot tension of, between. Mm -hmm. the yeah, there was tribes. a lot of lot of tension. United and, uh, by sports. Yeah, 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 United by sports, and uh, and uh, the, the biggest one became uh, Tore Timor. Wow! And, so uh, you did it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I was invited uh, Joe Yagi and uh, his team there as a volunteer photographer in 2012. Okay. And um, mind-blowing uh, mountain bike, <laughs> hula balo. We have uh, over a thousand people on the road, uh, and uh, 500 kilometers in five days. And it's crazy wow. because it's uh, like it's so hot and it's so dry, and go up in the mountains and down to the valleys, and uh, very very dangerous uh, race. And uh, and uh, yeah, in that time, the first first trip, uh, United Nations was still um, mm. uh, supporting with all the, the all the food mm -hmm. and everything, all the trucks and uh, logistics. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing circus to go around Timor <laughs> and uh, and uh, 2000. 12 actually we went to uh, uh, Oekusi, which is a little enclave uh, in, uh, in West Timor in Indonesian mm -hmm. side. So we crossed the border with 650 riders and uh, all the logistical, over a thousand people across the border and there's all the generals from both sides and uh, shaking hands. It Whoa. was a so historical moment. Uh, you photograph all that, yeah? I, they still, in both sides of the border, there's all the police stations, there's one of my photos, the Timorese uh, motorbike uh, police and Indonesian motorbike police, they are together on the bridge between the two countries. The east uh, part of Timur yeah, and the west and, part. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we, we <laughs> I put the guys together and uh, I was like, let's take one historical photo and boom. You, so you are the guy who took it. Yeah. Wow. We will add it in this podcast. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> There was a lot, lot, of, lot of history making in that, that tour and, uh, and then we came to um, in, in Oekusi and uh, it, was, it was like going back in a time machine. Huh? It was like nothing happened there in 25 years mm. or 30 years. Huh? And it's like we lost in time. Lost in time, we crossed to the mountains, and all the little children, they never seen a white man. Huh? So wow. they were running away. What was their and, reaction? How do they react? So it's like, so the Timor did it really well. Um, like a few days before, there was a truck, and they have all these cow little cowbells, and yes. uh, you know, all all kind of toys for kids. And so everybody was on the street. Of and course. It was so amazing. It was like a superstar riding. Uh, it's like <laughs> everywhere. There's thousands of people everywhere. And, and everybody is singing Viva so Timor Leste. The, this is like the first international mm -hmm. event in the island. Uh, would be no, in, it, in it, two, 2009 was the first one. Mm -hmm. and okay. Uh, yeah. So I was then, I was in the fourth one now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I went 2000. Uh, there was a little break uh, because the government changed and there was no um, uh, support from Some the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2017 was uh, picked up to the Timor and. But then, then um, mm -hmm. I had the responsibility to film most of it. Uh, we had a very small skeleton team for filming. This is filming. what we are going to see today, no? No, no, no. 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 This is the yeah. program. Yeah. 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 We are, we are yeah. going to it's see the awakening the, program the yeah. with, with, the specific with, the, with yeah. the sports and the yeah. war veterans. Right? Yeah. Before yeah. Anna yeah. makes Correct. the next question, I just want to mm -hmm. ask you regarding Timor. How was Shanana Guzman? Because you met him, yeah? Uh, well, he's he a, a such a charmer. Huh? He's, he's an amazing human being, and uh, and uh, he he gambled everything in his life so many times, and uh, he he still loves his people so much, and uh, you know he lost a lot and gained a lot, and uh, and I hope the best that uh, you know Timor Leste can one day uh, you know come uh, really equal with other countries, and uh, you know go over the poverty line and. And, uh, you know, it's one of the youngest countries in the planet. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah, 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 yeah mm -hmm. it is. Uh, and and people are amazing there. And through the hard years uh, under the Indonesian times, uh, people people um, they forgave for Indonesians and every Timorese they love Indonesian as their brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And that that for me it's so amazing. Uh, That's beautiful. <laughs> it, it so when you are coming, uh, mm -hmm. you are coming. Out of love, yeah. This yeah. is a, yeah. the experience is love. Mm. Yeah. See, right. bringing peace to a place where war was yeah. uh, so big mm. and so mm. much atrocity was made, right. and seeing they are hugging each other again mm. for, for you is mm. the best gift you can have. It is. It is truly. It's the it big is. Act and of I'm, love. I'm, I'm from a small country, and we were a long time oppressed by Soviet Union. So I, I really wow. feel, feel feel that country. Um, um, you know how people. 
you know, when I grew up, it was pretty red country, uh, Finland, uh, okay. you know, and uh, so, uh, but not so hard way as Timorese yeah. had in their, in their time, and uh, and I seen the more the you know positive side of after all the conflict and everything, and see them healing and. And to be part of the healing, and of you are there yeah. in that moment, yeah. and you are and you are part of it. And um, so you are a very expert uh, drone pilot. Yeah, I learned um, uh, flying drones uh, in Zumba, and uh, my background uh, after elementary school, I went to a cartography school, so I'm a cartographer. Mm -hmm. And when commercial drones came out, uh, I was like, wow, I, I can make maps. Why? <laughs> I can actually <laughs> produce maps uh, yeah, with aerial photography. Of course. And uh, then it became my profession. Your profession. Yeah. And uh, okay, so when you talk about drones and this aerial kind of uh, mapping and seeing the world from above, mm. you have a dip different perspective of things, <laughs> right? That's because for sure. <laughs> you are always from above, and we, we don't get these different layers. Mm. How is it for you, and how this. this change your perspective of things while, mm. while doing your, your projects, especially in these places where there's always some, some turmoil and related to, to subjects are so, you know, difficult to understand as wars and uh, uh, difference and politics difference. How mm. is it incorporating this, this, this expertise? Now, how do you see it? As I was a long time photographer, and suddenly I got the camera up in the sky. I felt like a bird, huh? I was like, I always wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> and suddenly I was. <laughs> I was a you pilot. Could. I could see the, the, the world from the sky down. Mm -hmm. huh? And see the beauty and, uh, and, you know, landscape and the sunsets and the sunrises. And, and then it's a pretty difficult tool to use to film people and their cultures and stuff, uh, but I think I master it pretty well, uh, especially in Timor, uh, because I, uh, 2017 I became a part of a uh, Timor Awakening program, mm -hmm. which is um, mm -hmm. Australian and uh, uh, Timor Leste Veterans uh, PTSD mm -hmm. um, um, healing program. So we have a bunch of uh, Australian veterans, they, they flew in uh, in Dili, and uh, so um, uh, few days in Dili and uh, introduction for the program and then we hit to the road huh? mm -hmm. and we go up to the mountains and meet all these uh, you know ex guerrilla fighters and communities and each village and each region they welcome with thousands of people huh? and drones they were really useful to, to cover to all that mm -hmm. to see and the you massive know, amount of people yeah and uh, you know many times I, I bring the drone I hold the drone in my hand and uh, when we come to the village let it up in the air, film every, every, everybody, land it down and continue filming. Right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then later on, uh, you know, put the sound on. And, uh, yeah, you because know, you produce yeah. the, um, you mm. not just film it, but you also produce the... Yeah, the, the uh, no. <laughs> So you edit <laughs> and you, you produce? Edit. Yeah, one man production team. Uh, yeah. yeah. And together with Michael Stone, uh, we, we create this flow of, uh, of filming and the storytelling together mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was my first time to really have a proper storytelling mm -hmm. and, and it was so difficult because I don't have any education for it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love good uh, documentaries and you know understand you know the beginning and you know crescendo and you know all that uh, but then when you have this massive amount of uh, film material and uh, how to tell the story uh, right. which is important. What, what is important to tell for What's people? What's the highlights? Yeah. How do you edit? How you cut? What is important exactly. in each piece? Yeah. Yeah. And you use music in your uh, documentary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you need to work with sound, mm -hmm. yeah. photograph, mm -hmm. filming. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot the, of work. The, the, the fir first um, uh, film what I did uh, it was together with the Australian commando, commandos. Uh, and the oldest commando was 84. Five years old, a Korean War commando, wow. and a bunch of um, uh, Vietnam War uh, commandos, and then from the Timor conflict uh, commandos, and uh, all the African um, uh, conflicts and wars, and Iraq, Afghanistan, and tough, some of, tough and, people. Uh, yeah, and some some of the commandos they were still in active duty, huh? so and I didn't know, uh, <laughs> and uh, some like third night, uh, I had a little bit harsh moment uh, it's like 
you cannot film me because I'm in active duty in Afghanistan. Wow. And, uh, and, and the boys, they have a couple of beers and, you know, the, you know big, big, strong, big strong ones. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you don't want to mess with them. Yeah. No. But, you know, after a few days, uh, then, you know, we find the equilibrium and, uh, and of course, I never, never showed their faces uh, because yeah. they were in active duty. Uh, uh, and there is, I had so much stories to tell, and uh, it's those few films what I have done. Uh, it just uh, scratched the surface mm -hmm. of the of the pain, and um, you know, people get really lost with, in war. Uh, even nice. professional commandos uh, they can get really hurt inside their soul. Uh, I, I did uh, mm. military duty in Portugal, and mm. some of the, my superiors they were coming from the war in Angola. Right. They were completely oh, screwed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. yeah war, war is horrible. Yeah, uh, no, it's not and uh, uh, I've, nothing I've been always very interested in war history, and I still I am, uh, and I study a lot of war history so to <laughs> try to understand why we human beings doing it. Uh. Mm. And but then when I had the chance in Timor to really to interview people who've been in real wars and you know and been active duty and uh, get broken from inside outside uh, and uh, then also to to follow them from darkness to light uh, mm. because this program Timor Awakening really helped them uh, and I was like in, in it takes six months for the people for the first steps to come out from the darkness uh, and Timo Awakening in Timor Leste, it's the last 11 days uh, and that is the, the last 11 days it's when things go back together uh, and it's amazing to, to witness uh, people come from so dark place and then suddenly like whoa <laughs> there's, a light. there's a light and it was the Timorese who helped them out uh, Wow. Yeah, because they're so happy, they lost everything. Huh? They lost everything. They're still still happier. Huh? You know, Australia people, you know, they have everything. They have plenty of yeah, money. Uh, the veteran programs are good. And uh, but when you are in your pain, huh, you cannot see outside. Huh? And the Timor is they are they are them, uh, the conductors. Uh, they ping open up and uh, so you were so you beautiful were, to see. You are facing human race. Yeah, yeah. you are oh, facing totally. human being. Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. We totally. are good a, a essence in our essence. Mm. Even we are now mm. being affected by the noise outside <laughs> yeah. because people are craving for tourism <laughs> again. Mm. That's why we're listening noise Th everywhere. Those guys, they they doing their money uh, to feed yeah. their family, uh. and we respect that. Yeah. And this comes mm. in the in the in the way of the next question. Mm -hmm. mm. So, did you use the drones for tourism or hotels? And now you see the tourism invasion of Bali during these last 20 years. Mm. Yeah, because the reality is that there is a positive side because you feed mm. the family and people have mm. a good lifestyle and everything. Mm. And where do you see this can be upsetting to the economy? I, I don't say the economy, but the ecosystem and uh, the human relationship. Where is it too much? Where is the balance? And you were filming with drums. You did work for hotels. Uh, oh, no, not, not so very much. much. Only a few times, and I don't yeah, to make some cash. But yeah, yeah. And uh, but it, it's it's really not my my journey. Huh? Yeah. It's I'm. I love to film so much more nature and, and uh, art for art. And I'd rather be a bit hungry for a while and uh, to you know get to a really good program. Uh, so your, your project of tourism is a tipi, so we know you are really back to the basics. Yeah, so yeah. Me and my dear girlfriend Darinka. Uh, oh, which was she was already here. Right. Mm. She already did a podcast. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, we have a little tipi camp up in the mountains in Batukaru, and we actually just took it down uh, last. Rain, yeah. rain, the rainy, rain, season. rainy season started and uh, yeah, but it was like good five months uh, experience to go back to basics and no electricity, TP in the in the mountains, in the bush and uh, build everything by myself and with a lo couple of local guys and uh, and uh, yeah, it. I think when people come back here in Bali uh, after this COVID Situation. finish, uh, I think everybody wants to go into nature. Uh. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because you had seen a Bali before and after this tourism invasion, you mm. have experienced uh, a little bit of the change of, of mm. the island. Yeah. And I, I'm not surprised that you choose the, a tipi because anyone that understands how this develops and how this, you know, impacts the the economics, the the social structure of an mm. island, it's it's massive, mm. and it many is. times mm. it's not so good. Mm. So. 
I guess this is one of the reasons why you choose a, a TP, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm a forest man. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had my first TP in India, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Where? Really? Uh, we built it. Uh, yeah, we did it. Uh, we sewed. Uh, we sewed it up in in a pink house in uh, in Goa, mm -hmm. and uh, then we traveled. Uh, Where in Goa you were? It was not far from the Goa flea market. There was oh, this that's Arjuna, Arjuna, yeah, Arjuna, Arjuna. Arjuna, Arjuna. There was market. the people uh, who made the teepees and sell the teepees. So yeah, uh, I remember yeah, that market. It's yeah. a very gypsy yeah, kind yeah, of very gypsy, market. Yeah, very yeah. gypsy. Yeah. So I end up to travel with the teepee with my girlfriend at that time uh, for a few months around you did India. India. Yeah. Crazy, man. <laughs> we went to Andaman Island. So you uh, went to Andaman. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Andaman is beautiful. Put, we put the teepee up Near there. Thailand. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm, amazing place. Oh. I hope uh, one day I can go back there. So now, uh, regarding the movie night we have tonight, and you have so many projects, mm. you did so many movies and documentaries and experience and mm. filming, why did you choose, I know you chose another one before, mm. uh, Anna told me, I'm right. not going to speak about it, mm. Anna wants to go there, it's her place mm -hmm. to do, but why specifically you, to, you choose this project, uh, the Timor Awakening, what, what is so useful there and important to share with people. I, I think it's very important to to show people what have happened there and uh, the journey of healing and uh, not many people know what happened in Timor, Timor Leste and uh, and um, so um, I want to show my little part uh, how we try to fix up the things and and how to fix human being now. Yeah. Mm. And this actually uh, also brings us to the last question of today's podcast which is related to the power of creation and destructive patterns of mm. human beings. Mm. So you have been throughout your line of work and your projects that you have been involved, which you can make like three podcasts more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we will do some more, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you, could, you, you see and witness the, the pain, but also the power of healing mm. of, this, of these patterns. How do you see it? What strikes you as the most important in this? And why are we so capable of doing such beautiful things, but also such destructive things? What do you think about that? Mm. Well, that's a hard question, huh? That's why you save it yeah. for last. Yeah. <laughs> it is, we, we have some animal instinct, uh, very destructive instinct inside Primary ourselves. Primary instinct. Yeah, but, and but it, it comes also. Uh, it's so it comes so deep. Huh? Mm -hmm. But it, I think also I'm reading at the moment um, a Sapiens book. Whoa! And uh, it's, they, it's a, it's a very good to, book to read. Uh, Sapiens, uh, yeah. check it out. Huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, there, when we were still hunting and gathering, uh, we were actually pretty all right with the planet. Huh? But since we stuck in the farms and uh, start to gather um, uh, stuff more around. and more we got this greed uh, and i think the greed is it, it's the main evil there uh. we always have to have more, more that you more. don't need actually yeah mm -hmm. exactly uh. and uh yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> Mm. It's like, uh, I we, don't know, we, it, we it's, it, it's a journey, mm -hmm. yeah? it's a journey. Well, of I, everybody else. So. The one we did, mm. uh, uh, Eden Sustainable Path. We talked about We that. talked mm. about this. And actually, uh, Benjamin, he will be uh, this night, he will speak with you, yeah. hopefully. Mm. He says that we are still, and there are some theories that says that we are not still civilized. Mm. Uh, you have phones and drones mm. and podcasts right. and mm. drink a glass of wine with right. candles and drink champagne. Right. We are very elegant right. but in the end. Mm. We are still as human beings mm. uh, acting in a very primary, primary way of yes. moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this brings us to awareness. Yeah, mm. and, right. uh, and it comes there when people suffer immense, immensely. Uh, they come in this kind of a put the state of, you know, when somebody being tortured, uh, you know, 20 years uh, in the dark cells uh, in Timor, uh, it's, there comes, Soft. Pe people come, people come, they have a, you know, every day is given to them, uh, every day is given to them, and it's, they, they are the biggest teachers, we because they really went so should much. listen. Uh. They don't take things for granted, yeah, that's exactly. for sure. Every so the level of frustration one is very high, mm. you get this kind of understanding of 
peace mm. is the masterpiece. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And peace. peace is the masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is a very Amen. good one. And cheers. Yeah. And we are going to close here. Yeah. I don't have a glass of wine. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you, Simonetta. Right. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Made. Viva Timor Leste! Viva Timor Leste! Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Anne. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.